Hi, it's Sophie, Sophie Kirkham. Welcome to Birth Bag. Friday, one o'clock. Um, so this is going to be kind of like, hopefully a sort of uninterrupted teaching, showing, sharing session, um, talking about what to put in a birth bag. So you can watch this now, you can watch it later, you can share it, there's a share button, share. Um, you can invite grandparents to be to watch it, pregnant people, dads to be, partners to be, parents, everybody um, to watch. And let us know, can you hear me okay? That's important. Um, let me know you can hear. Um, and are you pregnant? I am. I'm probably one of the only people doing Facebook hypnobirthing live stuff who's preggers. I think I'm probably one of a handful at the most. So I'm kind of um, hoping to get my birth bag ready, but also, you know, kind of share the usefulness of it with you. And um, practicality. So let's have a think. Um, as this is sharing out, so I know Andy's here, my partner, giving me a um, a helping hand um, with loading up of loading up of um, this onto the hypnobirthing group. So if you're watching from the hypnobirthing group, hello, thank you very much for joining me. Let me know um, that uh, you can hear me, and let me know um, are you are you a birth partner? Are you a doula? Are you going to be a grandparent? Um, is this your first? What are you having? And um, Andy, you can relay any questions via all the stuff we've got up, set up behind. So we've got a few prompts and things so I can see your stuff. I'm gonna try and keep this to about half an hour. I haven't practiced it, but I've been going over and over in my head what I think is really useful. Um, so as you join me, remember that this is um, about what to put in a birth bag. Okay, so I've reframed it from hospital bag. I don't wanna call it the hospital bag because I don't see birth as an illness that requires going to hospital as a patient. I see us as strong women at the peak of wellness, bringing forth new life. And uh, don't get me wrong, okay, this pregnancy has been really tough. I don't feel um, at the peak of wellness. <laughs> I feel at the peak of bilious and uh, sickiness a lot of the time. But I don't see myself as a patient requiring help. Um, and so the plan is um, to have our kids here at home but we've got a bag ready just in case so that's what all this stuff I'm going to show you today is all about and it's not too much stuff it should all fit into this small roller suitcase which is practical okay you don't want a load of bags that you have to carry with handles when you're moving from your car or a taxi to a birth center or maybe even up to a, a labor ward okay you want something you can roll and stand still um, as the birth partner, because it's obviously not the birthing woman who's going to be um, carrying the suitcase, hopefully. Um, and then a sort of birth partner bag as well, which is ostensibly, I'm not going to show you what's in here, this is just common sense. This is a change of clothes, toothbrush, um, change of socks as well because you might be taking your shoes off in the birthing room and just wandering around in your socks because that'd be nice especially if the woman's getting on the floor on hands and knees she doesn't want to put her hands where you've been treading your shoes and I'm also going to put the food in here um, food and drink now I don't know if any of you are laboring under the misapprehension that you shouldn't eat or drink in labor but let's just let's just bust that myth right now okay it's possibly it could be anything from like four to 8,000 calories that you're burning up during your labor. Okay, so think of that as half a marathon or plus. Luckily, your surges come in waves, whereas a marathon you have to constantly run, right? So, what works really well? Okay, so somebody's already asked this morning about Lucozade and energy sweets. Do you drink Lucozade normally? Because I don't. <laughs> I don't want to upset the people at Lucozade either. Because um, I know that um, diabetics of a certain generation use Lucozade a lot. But um, personally, I don't. I, like, why? Um, so let's think about things that nourish your system. Every mouthful, okay, there's got to be something that's nourishing your system. So let's get food and drink out of the way straight away. I can go in birth partner bag. Um, 
So, oh, phone's ringing. <laughs> Soup, okay, thermos. You're familiar with these. So I don't know where you are watching this in the world or what your season is. Here in the UK, it's trying to be summer. Um, it's pretty hot today, actually. Um, I, when I was birthing my son eight years ago, I wanted pea and ham soup. So we put it in a thermos and we took it with us. I'd laboured at home for most of my labour. So this was just like a top up. But it's something the birth partner and you can have and it's hot and it's, you know, it's just easy. Make sure you put the lid on a thermos properly, okay? Because we left like a little trail of soup through um, the hospital. Okay, so soup. Why soup? Well, you might not be asking why, but I'm going to say why I think it's really useful. It's really nourishing and you don't have to chew it. So imagine your surge is coming in waves and then you've got your little rest and then you've got your wave and then you rest in your resting time. However long or short a time that is, it's not super easy to chew stuff, okay? I always remember Abby and her Haribo. I talk about this in class. Um, she wanted some Haribo and she kind of got the taste of it, but there wasn't time to chew them in between surges. So I had to put my hand there so she could just spit them out. Um, Haribo, yes, um, chocolate um, is also very, very important. I think good quality chocolate. Um, there's plenty out there on the market. Um, I've also got energy balls. I picked up a couple today. I'm not like placing products, but I'm just looking at stuff that I think is really, really useful for you and your birth partner, okay? Birth partners, you need to stay hydrated and eat as well. So stuff that's high in protein um, and not like just a sugary chocolate bar. Chocolate's good, yes, don't get me wrong, but you want something that's gonna nourish your system, okay? So think of mother, baby, womb, working together in harmony, energized. Um, Andy, I'll go to some questions after I've done the food and drink bit. Sorry, I've got something fluffy on my lip. Um, so as labour progresses, you go from like the chewier food into the liquid food because it's easier to swallow. Um, staying hydrated is really important. It's really important. It's really important to stay hydrated. You must drink. So what sort of drinks? Coconut water, okay? Do you like it? Not particularly, or you love it? Great. Well, have some. <laughs> and take some straws with you so that it's easier for you to kind of suck on a straw than it is to try and pick up a cup and suck it, okay? So your partner, your birth partner, your midwife can pass you a drink with your straw. So just have a handful of straws. Even better, oh, I've missed, I've forgotten to put it on, but a drink, sports drink bottle. So like a um, kind of bottle that you would take um, on a workout so that it's got a straw on the top and you can just sup it. Okay, so in those go. I've also got some green juice. So if you've got, um, if you're a juicing person, make yourself up a, <clears throat> a green leaf smoothie um, and add in water. This uh, reacting with my system, but um, I picked up this one today, which is an innocent smoothie which is apple and cucumber and celery and spinach. Yum. Okay, and bananas, okay? Bananas are nature's awesome snack. They are fantastic um, and they are so useful. So you might not be able to like eat a whole banana in one go during your labor, but you might be able to in half an hour. So you could kind of do like in normally in our relationships, if you're in a partnership and your birth partner's with you in your labour and your birthing, normally our partners aren't like, hey, um, eat this, you know, they, they don't force us to eat stuff. But I would give your part, birth partner permission to make you eat if you're a little bit reluctant to, okay, because it's really important to keep fueled up. What you don't want to do is get into ketosis where your body's burning its fat reserves and uh, labour's going to slow down, and then you might get into a bit of a pickle. Um, by that I mean things might just slow down because you're hungry, and you need to eat, and then your body can use that energy to carry on with the labour. 
So, bananas. I'll tell you a quick story about this. Andy, could you tag Rachel? Because this is the story of Rachel and the banana. So, Rachel had been in the birth pool with her second child. She was birthing her um, surprise gender baby. We didn't know what it was. And um, she probably hadn't eaten for about four hours. She'd been having drinks, but she hadn't eaten anything. It might have been five hours. And so I, I, I tried to get her to eat some banana. Her husband, Wayne, tried to get her to eat some banana. And then the midwife just got the banana and kind of crouched down next to the birth pool and she said, I need you to eat some of this banana. And Rachel kind of looked up and went, okay then. But before that, she'd just been like the kind of kid in a high chair who doesn't want to eat. And, um, I don't, yeah. Just, Getting the cat out, brilliant. Go on, cats. Shoo! It's all go in the house of cats. Um, so the story of Rachel eating the banana with Mr. Climax, we're letting the cat out. Right, so she eats just a little bit of banana, and I'm not kidding you, in about a minute after that, the most almighty surge occurred, and it was like, ha ha, you see? The instant power of the banana. It's such a useful snack, take a bunch with you. Okay, what else? Um, honey and a spoon. Okay, so maybe in later labour, you're not hungry. You're staying hydrated, you know you are, you're peeing frequently and often. But have a spoonful of honey just to give you a bit of a boost. And I've treated myself to some very posh honey for our birth bag. Um, the birth bag is a good place to have everything if you're at home. If you're planning to birth at home, it's good to have everything in one spot. So I think ostensibly that's what our bag is for. It's about us having everything in one place. That's um, Oh, thanks John for telling me I look fab. I feel quite good today. Sonia, hello. Um, oh, 34 weeks, full-time mum. Good on you, Sonia. Amy, looking forward to watching later. Let me know how you get on. Protein balls, coconut water, okay with gestational diabetes? Well, that's a good question. Right. Are they? Don't know. Who asked that question? Don't know. Um, um, gestational diabetes, that's a really interesting one. We can segue into colostrum Alison. harvesting. Alison, I don't know. I don't know how severe the gestational diabetes is and I can't offer you medical advice, but I do know you need to eat during your labour. And so whatever the, the diet is that works well for you and your GD, your gestational diabetes, then you carry on with that. Although, you know, labour's labour and if you really fancy something, check with your midwife, but she might be like, yeah, go on, have a bounce ball. Um, I've got here some teeny tiny syringes. This is one milliliter. You can pick these up from the pharmacy, from the chemist, for next to nothing. You could say, look, can I have 10 one mil syringes? And the pharmacist might look at you like you're a bit dodgy, but actually you're not dodgy. Um, you could just say, well, I'm gonna use them for colostrum harvesting. So colostrum is the first, um, Andy, could you <laughs> chuck over a knitted boob? We'll get some of Peggy's uh, knitted boobs out. Um, it's the first super duper amazing stuff that your boobs make. Ta-da! Um, this is made by my mum-in-law, Peggy. She knitted me a whole bunch of them. All different shapes, sizes and colours, just like boobs are. And um, the colostrum you can harvest through hand expression. So just look up on YouTube some really, really good um, hand expression videos. And then you can, pro probably with the help of a friend or a birth partner, you can collect the little drops into the syringe. Or, if you've got a bit of a flow, you can collect it into like a little feeding cup or something, and then take it up, put it into a box, put it in the freezer, and save it. So Alison, if nobody's talked to you about um, harvesting colostrum in readiness for when your baby comes, now's the time. Find out who the, um, the midwife is at your chosen birthing place, who's the specialist in infant feeding. Meet her now before your baby comes and have a little chat about what would work well, okay? Um, so that's drink for the baby. Something I haven't put in the food bag is rehydration drink. Okay, so 
I've got here something from Arbonne which is called Phytosport. It's a complete rehydration drink and it's tropical berry flavour. Um, it's really useful to stay hydrated. Another option might be something like Dioralite replacement salts. Why? Well, because water, you can drink as much water as you like, but if you're lacking in like the magnesium salts, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> the uh, zinc or the sodium, then that can impact on your super duper turbo womb muscles working really well and efficiently, okay? So get yourself some of those and make up a drink, again, in a, a drink bottle that you can sip out of the spout of. And um, maybe you've got a rehydration sachet and water and then your favorite bit of juice or coconut water and drink through that especially if you're laboring in the bath or you're getting into a birthing pool or um, or you're in the shower a lot that doesn't show that you're sweating as much as if you're on dry land I'm sweating right now <laughs> um, we've got all the doors and windows closed so it's nice and quiet I'm looking over at the flip chart for questions um, bendy straws Sasha says thanks Sasha do you mean like, use again bendy straws? Okay. Um, John says a camelback um, bladder, right, so that's like the little runner's rucksack with a, a, um, a straw. Who was asking if they could put strawberry milkshake in one of those? Was that Eleanor? John's partner, I don't know, it might have been. Okay, so, where are we? We've done, we've done, <laughs> we've done food. <laughs> And just a reminder that you need to eat, you need to stay hydrated, you need to pee, and birth partners, you do as well. The last thing you want is to get to, I don't know, maybe a 20 hour labour and, and you haven't had something to eat and drink and you get all ooh, tired and wobbly. That's not very useful. Okay, mums, hypnobirthing pack. Okay, so this is full of scripts and um, affirmations. It's also got a door sign. And this one is part of the um, my online um, hypnobirthing program. So it's a please observe in silence. Mum's name is water birth, hypnobirth. Please use gentle, positive words. Keep calm and please knock. It's something to put on the door. Um, back in January, I was at a birth and we didn't have a door sign and we'd had some really helpful caregivers come in, but they were on a different level and vibe to the way we were. We were kind of really dozing and... Um, and they weren't. And so we made a label by writing on a hand towel and sticking it on the door with a postage stamp. Maybe with a bit more forethought I would have had a sign. And then I just stick it on with a bit of blue tack or a piece of sellotape. Okay, affirmations. Whatever the affirmations are, these are the affirmations that are taken from the hip birthing group. About a year and a half ago I asked everyone to share their favourites. And these are the affirmations made from those, okay? And those are part of the online kit now, and they're an audio for listening to. So birth partners should be really familiar with these. Um, and maybe you have your affirmations up so they're in eye line. So wherever you are, they're there. Um, it was a, a wonderful, all births wonderful, right? There's, you know, there's moments that are extraordinarily beautiful. And um, I was a, at one 10 weeks ago, and the mum had a picture of the rose that she was imagining opening as, you know, her body opening and flowering right up, slap bang on the wall in front of the bed head where she was leaning over. So think about taking those with you. Birth wishes document, okay? Really important. In the absence of your birth wishes document, right, nobody really knows what you want. So unless you're doing something really outlandish like you want a birth on the outside of the shard in a window cleaning basket, which nobody does, okay, because that would just be very odd. But take your birth wishes with you and have several copies. If you've got any special circumstances, okay, so if you have special circumstances, that's a hypnobirthing reframe for high risk, okay, special circumstances. If that's you, it's really important to have conversations with your midwives, your caregivers, 
before labour and to get a birth wishes planned together and agreed and signed and all the rest of it so that when you turn up in labour or if when your midwives come to the house that it's all pre-organised and there's no need to have to start negotiating yes I can use the birth pool no I only want intermittent monitoring all of this kind of stuff it's all been sussed, sorted and agreed earlier, okay? Again, this is a sample hypnobirthing one and that's all part of the online programme. Next up in the bag. <laughs> um, toilet bag, toothbrush, shower gel. Um, and someone's asking about essential oils. Oh, do you know, I was thinking about this. Um, I'm not an aromatherapist, so I have to caveat this. Clary sage oil. Um, it smells really nice. It really, really is something that we don't even have in the house. You know, if we did, we'd have it in a lead box somewhere because there are so many pregnant women that come here. It can bring labour on, okay? So we don't really want that. Um, so you stay away from it until 40 weeks. Um, I know that in the first trimester, we really shouldn't have lavender around. Um, but that's kind of, that's those are the boundaries of my understanding with it. Um, and... I, I love the smell of jasmine oil. I love frankincense as well. Um, probably, hold on, I'll just get my oils bag. Um, I've got a bag full of lovely oils that I've accumulated over the years. And probably it's enough, sometimes with a super duper pregnant nose, to just have the bottle and the lid off near you. That's enough. The air will mix and a few molecules of that essential oil will get to you and if it's enough and you don't want it anymore you just put the lid on it and you put it away okay if you're um, particularly keen on a particular smell and it works really well for you why don't you use that I think that's probably a good bit of advice um, maybe we should do an aromatherapy Facebook live so if anybody watching is a qualified aromatherapist and a birth worker um, then get in touch and we'll set one up because I'd really like to do that um, I'm struggling slightly with this Facebook Live because I can't see anything. I haven't got a screen to look at, so it's completely blank for me. And I've, every other one I've done, I've been able to see myself. So if I'm not looking at you, I'm really sorry. Okay, what else have I got? In here, I've got a wrap. This is a baby wearing wrap. I think it's a Moby. There are loads and loads of different kinds. Uh, might be a Moby. It's basically yards and yards of fabric <laughs> that you use for wearing a baby. However, you could use it for rebozo, for lifting the bump, for helping women in their birthing to be more comfortable. It's called rebozo, R-E-B-O-Z-O. If you want to know more about rebozo, can you comment the word rebozo in the comments and we will send you information because we know some really good practitioners and I think um, there might be some really good online stuff that we can share with you. Um, if you haven't experienced somebody holding the weight of your bump, um, try it. It's quite nice. My bump's not quite big enough yet for it to make a huge considerable difference. But I'm sure in a month's time, I'll be like, Andy, please, can you do some more rebozo? Um, Andrea says rebozo, please. Yeah. Andrea. Andrea. Yeah, mm -hmm. just put it in the comments, in case if you're watching live or you're watching later or someone shared this with you, Rebozo, alright? So, that is basically a baby wearing wrap. Um, you can buy beautiful hand woven baby uh, Rebozos, but I, I find those work really well. Okay. Hmm. Okay. What else have I got in my bag of treasures? Not quite in it, but would be. A mirror and a torch. Any ideas? <laughs> Why? Why have I got a mirror and a torch? Does anybody know? Well, um, maybe put something in the comments, which I can't see. Is anybody having a guess? Why would I have a mirror and a torch in my bag? Um, it's not, like my son said, when I took him to have a look around Lewisham Birth Centre near us, the torch, um, just in case the baby rolled under the bed so you could find them. He was five at the time. I was like, no, that's not it. Um, I'll tell you. It's in case you want to have a look 
at maybe the baby coming out or something, but you don't want to disturb the woman. And it's dark, so you can kind of just shine the light and you can tuck the mirror just underneath where maybe she's kneeling or squatting, because she's not going to be lying on her back, right? Because that's the crappiest position to give birth in. Um, and then you can just sort of tuck it underneath and shine the light on the, the holiest of holies to see maybe a bulging bag of waters or maybe some fluffy hair showing. Very handy. Andrea said birthing pool. <laughs> birthing pool, yes. It is. You can kind of put the mirror in the water and the light obviously travels in the water and you can have a little look. Very exciting. Um, Andy threw one of my torches away from my dealer bag and I was gutted because it was of such sentimental value. So I need to write on this one and go, not to be thrown away, to be kept forever. Um, I've got a mobile phone and a charger. Um, the mobile is just, local. Just on, on the uh, mirror. On the mirror, go on. So Sam says, will the midwife have a torch or a mirror or do they need to get one for them to use? Hmm. Why don't you take your own? Because sometimes I think the torches and mirrors can go wandering. There's a special one called a Howes mirror. Virginia Howes developed it. So like a sort of ladle shaped one. So you can put it down into the water and have a little nosy without disturbing the woman. You shouldn't have to get up and down in the water in order to be checked and examined. But yes, I've got a phone and it's got hypnobirthing tracks loaded onto it. And it's got the music that I want to listen to during my birthing loaded on. It's all preloaded. Nothing has to be listened to live because it might be there's no 3G, 4G reception where you are and that's cool because you're not going to be checking in with stuff online, right? Probably. Um, what else? There's so much stuff! Okay, so the order of this. Oh, let's come to Leslie's things. Okay, so one of the admins or slash moderators of the hypnobirthing group is Leslie Gilchrist and she's quite prolific actually. As well as being an amazing midwife, she's also um, written loads of books um, and I must remember to post those links to those more often. Leslie's come up with a range of gorgeous stuff. She sent this through. Um, I'm just going to quickly show you. In terms of birthing, I think post-birth, once you've had a little bit of a rinse and a shower, there is the spritz for bits. I've already started using it because if, as you will know if you're pregnant, um, vaginal discharge seems to increase exponentially um, and it's quite nice to sort of go to the loo and then have a spritz bits and it just smells really nice. Um, she's given me a discount code um, for you so if you want that can you put expert midwife in the comments and I will um, message you with the link to her site and the discount 10% off. There's some no harm nipple balm I've tried it, it's quite nice. And just as an aside, um, your nipples make their own wonderful natural oil. Um, so when you're showering and stuff, before birthing and after, don't wash your nipples with soap, just water. You can wash your armpits with shower gel or soap, but don't wash your nipples, just let water run over them. And then, peri-peri bits. Okay, so, sorry, <laughs> that was not peri-peri. That would really hurt. Peri prep, okay, so it's got nothing to do with hot chili oil, it's the opposite. It's just an oil. I'm blushing because I can imagine ow, how uncomfortable that would be if you were doing perineal massage and stretching um, with this. Haven't started yet because you have to be 34 weeks to start on perineal massage and stretching. Um, and what else? Oh, yeah, and then the, script, the fantastic skin elastic. It's lush, it's really nice. Mm, love it. Okay, so comment expert midwife and I will send you over the discount code for those. So if anyone's saying, oh, um, what would you like? Is there anything I can get you? Um, yeah, actually there is. <laughs> get me some of this. Um, all right. Speaking of washing, the nicest baby shower gel stuff. Not that you need to wash your baby, but I'm thinking about you and your vulva if it's tender. Um, after giving birth is the Arbonne baby care stuff. Love it. I've been trialling it um, and I really like it. So when you're, um, you're looking into buying bits and bobs for your kid, have a look at Arbonne because their stuff is 
It's just really nice and it's all vegan and it's not tested on animals and it has plant ingredients. One other bit of stuff, magnesium oil. Um, Mandy, and I've forgotten her surname, um, Mandy talks about magnesium. Um, I think it's great to spray onto tired muscles, this magnesium oil. Um, you can get this at health food stores. Be careful, there's one that's got clary sage oil in, and as previously mentioned, not necessarily a great thing in labour um, or prior. Okay, so, oh, almost, almost there. What's that? If I ask a question, repeat it back. Like that. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> if if I ask a question. If I ask you a question. Yeah. And then you answer it. Say what the question is, because they might not hear me. Oh, okay. Uh, in from the questions that they're posting. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything specific for a home birth bag? Is the question that's come up. Alice, this is ugh, our home birth bag, and I've got some absolute treasure here. So you've seen the knitted boob made by my mummy-in-law Peggy who can make literally knit anything. I've got a knitted uterus with a baby, an umbilical cord and placenta. <laughs> I've got this <laughs> knitted womb with fallopian tubes and ovaries and a vagina, not really stretchy vagina, um, a knitted vulva and the story goes that she was a bit shy about knitting it but she didn't tell her sisters, but it's very, she's very inclusive, she's done me some with sort of blonde hair, she's done me some with dark hair, and they've even got a dick clitoris there too. Um, for home birth, um, Alice, I've got some in my treasure, uh, you don't need, this isn't just for home birth, this is for any birth. These are handmade cord ties, so they are crocheted, made out of cotton, sometimes silk. Um, and they're instead of keeping the, what I like to call the plastic keep it fresh clip. Okay, so when they, um, actually Andy, could you pass over the knitted womb? Because I can show them that. So when the, um, when your baby's born, this is a hugely scaled down baby. This baby is not the size that yours will be. <laughs> so let's have a very rapid birth. Woo! Okay. And then the placenta is waiting to come out as the baby's heart and lungs take over and and then the percent is birthed and you can catch it in a bowl or something. Um, you don't have to cut and clamp straight away unless there's some kind of really extreme reason. Um, you can birth the placenta and then cut and clamp. Um, clamping is done with these like, you know in the kitchen you have some little plastic clips that you'll keep maybe, I don't know, coffee bags or something fresh with. Um, that's the kind of thing they use against the baby and I, I just think that's really harsh on a lovely little soft tummy. So um, they can clamp them and then you can put your little cord tie round, knot it off and take the plastic clip off. Do that a couple of hours after birth or something. And hearsay has it that um, the cords dry up quicker and fall off quicker but I've got no actual proper study to say that that's a a real deal thing, okay? It doesn't have to be sterile, it just has to be clean the cord tie and putting the baby back in the womb. <laughs> Chucking, tucking the chin under, so that's good. Right, and we've chosen our cord tie and um, it's wrapped up on the mantelpiece ready. Um, the other thing I've got are these two pads. So Peggy read about breast pads. Some people's boobs leak a bit of milk um, I didn't have that with my son, but that's probably because he had the worst tongue tie I've ever seen and fed constantly, so there was no leaking. Um, but if you wear them in your top, um, then they smell of you and you can put them near your baby when your baby's having a little snuggle somewhere. And so those I've got. And Alice, I'm kind of just going to finish with the last things that Peggy's made. So she made a batch of these. These are, um, they've discovered really good for the little premies um, in the neonatal units, the early born kids. Um, they like them again, stuff it down your top so it smells of you, just in case your kid goes off to Niku and they've got something that smells of you and they, their little hands like to grab hold of these. 
So we donated a load to Lewisham Hospital and then I was like, oh no, <laughs> we didn't keep any for our baby. So Peggy's made us some more. And yeah, she even made this bowl. Peggy, you're amazing, really. I had no idea where to begin with that. All right, from that kind of thing to tenor lady incontinence pads, okay? No segue, guys, but I think these are really clever. So you probably will have bought maternity pads, which actually I don't think are as good. Um, maternity pads, they're not as um, ergonomic, they're not shaped to fit our, our sort of vulva and our bum as well as, say, these, you know, and these capture everything. So after you've birthed, you have a lochia, you have a, a, a period, you bleed, and that flow can be quite heavy. Um, and so why not treat yourself? <laughs> Do some really gorgeous uh, tenor lady pads. Um, or pants. So they do do, I'll put it away, they do do big pads, but I just think this is easier. Like you can put these on and, and you're sorted. You could tear them off if you needed to, um, or you can pull them up and down when you go to the loo. Um, I discovered this when we had a bit of a, we had a bit of a sad time a year or so ago when we lost a little tiny, tiny baby and had such a heavy um, bleeding situation. And I discovered that actually tenor lady pads were the business. They were the ones that I just felt comfortable in. And they captured the really heavy flow. So, treat yourselves, ladies. <laughs> um, and, getting close to, but not quite to the end, um, change of clothes for you, for your birth partner, and some clothes for your kid. So all I've got is a nice sort of floaty loose top, a feeding bra, this one is it's Royce and I actually sleep in it because it's so comfortable, it's really soft and it's got little hooks so you can undo the um, cups <laughs> and feed. Um, and I've got a cardigan and some maternity le leggings. You're still going to have a bump after you've birthed your baby so you still want to wear clothes that are not restrictive, that are loose and comfortable, okay? Be gentle with yourself, take care of yourself. Um, and then a couple more things. Um, Alice, the home birth bag and the, and the birth bag, I think it's all kind of one and the same. It's having stuff in one location and should you have to transfer for you or your baby, it's, it's organised. Because you're not likely to be just rushing out the door, it might take you half an hour to leave. Um, and having things prepped and ready is so useful. So amongst the other treasure, and a good tip for you here, when, you're, um, when you meet your baby, you're gonna be keeping them warm skin to skin. And then you just need to put like a little towel over them. And this is the towel that I first wrapped my son in and I've kept it all this time. Um, and it's dark blue, so it's not white, um, so it doesn't show you know, some red fingertip prints um, from the sort of gloop and blood that we see um, at birth. And if you haven't looked at pictures of gloop and stuff and babies being born, hopefully you will do, there's an amazing book and it's Becky Reed's book and it's called Birth in Focus. Um, Andy, could you possibly put a link to Becky Reed's book? Um, birth in Focus, and then people can get it because it's a fantastic book. Oh yeah, I've got some more Peggy treasure. She's knitted us a couple of things for a going home outfit. Sew that way up. <laughs> I think my baby's back is over here at the moment. So lovely little cardi, and a little like a strawberry hat. Lush, beautifully soft, but no need to get baby dressed straight away. Just have skin to skin, four, five, six hours of skin to skin, not just an hour. You don't need to get your baby dressed straight away. Um, your midwives will be keen to put a hat on them, um, and that's cool, because like their heads are a bit gloopy and the hair's got sort of mucus and slippery stuff um, in it. But then take it off once they're nice and warm on you, and smell them. Get with your kids' smell, bond with their smell. Um, and then I've got just really basically vests, all-in-ones, little tops. 
and Freddie's top that he first wore, so this baby gets to wear it as well. My first boy, and then this one. I just think it's just really nice to still have. So I treasure these things, um, and they're, they're in, they're ready, and they're sorted. The only other things, oh, Peggy's knitted us a gorgeous blanket, so we've got that. We've got an inflatable pillow, and we've got a couple of flannels. Well, a flannel and a, a clinical gauze swab, or something to support the perineum, <laughs> and a flannel. So right, Alice, at home, um, although the midwives will be bringing everything that they would have at the birth centre to the home, right? They load in with all their gear. Um, having a stack of flannels, this one's quite rough. I think it needs a, a wash and should be maybe put in the tumble dryer to fluff it up because it's pretty rough. But this gauze is really soft. And the last birth I was at, the midwife, um, who was a blessing, she was just so incredibly talented and wonderfully... Um, respectful and unobtrusive. She helped support the baby's head as it was being born and um, she just used a bit of gauze pressed gently against perineum um, and just mum just guided and worked with her body to bring the baby out. Very very stark contrast to that lying on your back with your legs up pushing. Keep it coming malarkey. That's my room 101 right there. Um, but that depends you know sometimes sometimes they have to shove. Ah, the birth ball. My helpful man has reminded me about the birth ball. So, this is a very small birth ball. This is like, for someone who's about five foot, I don't know what that is in metres, 140, 150, something like that. This is tiny. I'm five foot nine, um, and I've got a 75 centimetre ball. But, if you want a ball, because you like sitting on them, and they're comfortable, you can take yours with you. You don't have to take it in inflated. Again, the reason that we have a roller seat case is so that you can easily guide yourself along with it and you're not cum um, cumbered, Encumb encumbered <laughs> with stuff. All right, so check with your birth center. Have they got birth balls? Have they got cubs? Um, which is about, oh, what does it stand for? I can't remember. Comfortable upright birthing, there you go. Um, just find out. If you haven't checked out your birth centre, go and check it out. Sometimes they say, no, you can't come, we don't do tours. But you really do need to go and check it out. So just even if you can just get up to the doors and then give the midwife something lovely, um, then do so. Practice your route. Leslie says, hi. She's not going to join. Hi, Leslie. I've been through your kit. I introduced it. And I've offered everybody, um, if they write in the comments, um, expert midwife, I'll send them the link and the discount code. Um, right, what else? Um, I'm really enjoying this, but I realise that I have to keep to time. <coughs> I've gone over 15 minutes. The other bits and bobs that I've got, an eye mask. Where's that gone? An eye mask. And... For the purposes of this, headphones, um, but I can't um, source any at the moment. Over ear and in ear, okay? So take both. It doesn't matter if it's your kids over ear or, um, no thanks Andy love, um, or whatever, but have them. I got a birth report this week, which I need to get permission to share, but I'm happy to quote a bit. And um, her experience was that she wished she'd had her headphones in when she was going from the car to the birth centre because there were people stood outside the hospital smoking and, um, and they, they said a few things that just really cheesed her off in her primal birthing state. Um, so headphones for listening to your relaxation music or listening to your hypnosis. Um, maybe you've got to chill out in the hospital and you just want to listen to some self-hypnosis then take your headphones with you. Um, if you're in a cordoned off bay on a ward, then just have your phone on loudspeaker, just quietly listening to it. You'd be amazed the the calm should spread around the whole ward. It should really lower and relax the vibe. And the sleep mask is just really to shut yourself out and help you go into your own private bubble. And your birth partner can be responsible for 
protecting your privacy and your calm and your quiet. <sighs> um, other bits. So, I've got in here, very excitingly, Lenka, um, a student and friend, sent me a bead. I'm going to start collecting beads. Hopefully I'll get some at a mother's blessing. I'm going to do a mother's blessing in a few weeks, which is where um, you just invite your friends and family and you just share your hopes and your aspirations for your baby and your birthing. And um, so Lenka can't come, but she sent me this scarab and um, I really love it. So I've got that um, and I will add it on to make a bracelet or a necklace to hold up to birthing and to use in my birthing and to think about all those amazing other women around me and that unified strength um, in in numbers and the sisterhood and all that. Sonia, um, don't you separate your stuff, my clothes, from the babies for ease? Well, do you know what Sonia, you can do that. You could definitely do that. Um, I'm going to give Andy the responsibility of repacking the bag because he's going to be the one going in and out of it. I'm going to be busy <laughs> labouring. If we stay at home, which is our intention, um, then it's just having everything in one place. Um, I don't think there's too much stuff. What about the birth partner? What to take? Overnight bag, food, toilet bag. Um, and he's just pointing out your questions to me because I've forgotten to have a means of reading the comments. Um, and just, you know, you're never going to be too far away that you can't go and pick stuff up if you need it. That food, drinks, change of clothes, all of that good stuff. Excuse me, pregnant, got a bit of that acid going on. Mm. What else? I think that's nearly it, you know. Mm. Perhaps have a stash of cash if you've got your own car. Um, keep it in the glove box, along with a little card that says, you know, with a woman in labour. So when you park up to go and have your baby in a birth centre or in a labour ward, um, then you've got that ready um, to display. And the cash is just useful for car parks. So, um, Andrea, I will post a full list. If you would like the list, please put the word list in the comments and we will get back to you. Boom, boom, says the baby. Likes that one. List. <laughs> um, okay, right, so. That might not match with all the lists of stuff that people get um, told that they need to take, but I think those are the essentials um, for going to maybe birth your baby if you're not staying at home. And if you are at home, who is, who is home birthing? Is it Alison? I'm looking, Alice, um, then it's all in one little hub, one little corner. If you've got other kids, um, then pack them a little bag as well. So just in case they're going to go and stay with somebody else or not, I'm really hoping that our son can be here. I would like that to happen. Um, okay guys, so um, have you got any more questions? Because as we kind of bring this to a close, I want to offer you um, our Calm Hip the Birthing tracks and the online course. So I want to be able to kind of find out from you if you want that today. So normally that would be like a hundred pounds or whatever that is in dollars with the fluctuating markets. And um, that bundle, you can have that 77 pounds today for the um, Calm Hip the Birthing No Bullshit online birth plan and all the tracks as well so just write in the comments birth bundle and we will send you that um, link so that you can get that um, I hope this has been super useful um, thanks for watching in Michigan thanks for watching in um, Lewis and around the corner John and everybody else um, I've been threatening to do this birth bag Facebook Live for so long and now I've done it, I'm like, yeah, it's done. Um, we'll do a list. If you want the list, put the word list in the comments. Um, keep on sharing this. Um, if you've got any really useful tips of your own, then put them in. Just keep on sharing. And 
this this video is going to be in our in our group feed on the page feed and wherever else it's shared where you're watching it from it's not going anywhere we'll upload it to the youtube channel as well and um any more questions coming through cool thank you everybody very much and uh, may the calm be with you see you later